Hey everyone, it's a cold winter day out there. Got the wood stove going here. I'm uh, gonna be indoors today. Currently, I am doing a little uh, drywall work, a little drywall taping, modding. Um, I'm not gonna bring any video on that. This is more so gonna be just me sitting here talking. A um, few things I want to get off my chest. Um, because, again, life is more than just splitting wood, selling wood. There's more to life than just that. Um, obviously, a lot of things on this channel so far have been firewood, um, firewood related. I guess the, the, main, the main topic of this video is influencers. Everybody's an influencer. If you're, a, if you're a YouTuber, you're an influencer. If you're a father, you're an influencer. A sibling, a brother, a grandfather, a grandmother, uncles, aunts, you're influencers. It's almost a commission, I guess. Commissioning you. Because it's something I'm considering. I, I, I do consider. Um, but it's just at the forefront right now. Um, not just in my own life, but seeing the commission on others that they have influence whether they believe so or not on other people's lives. Whether it's whether it be they are the influence or you are the influence on them. So I just want to say to you know just, just consider. If you're a father, consider. Consider the influence that you have on your children. This world isn't what it is. If I know a lot of folks, um, you know, it's like a taboo thing to say, I don't know what's going on in the world today. It just didn't happen that way overnight. There was a reporter that went to a man. Sir, do you know, what do you think is going wrong with the world today? He said, I don't know and I don't care. Sir. How, how did you know that? Apathy and ignorance. You're right. I don't know and I don't care. People not knowing and not caring. I just want to say consider today. Consider the influence you have. If you're a spouse. Again, if you're a father, a mother, a grandfather, grandmother, aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, sisters, siblings. Things don't get, bad situations, bad, uh, you know, things don't just all of a sudden get to being sideways. There's usually a lot of little things in between. Just want to say consider. Consider the influence you have. Because I'm seeing recently I've already considered and made adjustments in my life, not, not recently, but <clears throat> in years past, but I see a lot of those around me who they just don't consider the influence they have. And to not make a choice sometimes is making a choice. If you've made a choice to say, I don't care, well, there's usually ramifications otherwise, even so on others. So I know this video is a little, you know, not, not the typical. I don't want to say it's the atypical. I've definitely brought some, some other videos that aren't just, you know, splitting firewood or outdoor stuff. Um, because life is more than just that stuff. If YouTube brought you to this channel right now, to this video, and you're already... 30, 60 minutes deep just watching random videos. But man, your life's falling apart. But I'd say turn off the video now, please. Go address that stuff. Once you recognize you gotta be an influencer, or you are an influencer, or you can be an influencer, what are you gonna influence with? What's your standard?
What are you going to bring that's worth influencing others with? Is it rooted in truth? I think the next question would be, who sold you your truth? What truth have you purchased? I don't believe truth is uh, malleable. I believe opinions are. Opinions, people have opinions. Not rooted in objective thought. Truth is objective. It's measurable. It's black and white. Who sold you your line of thinking? And is it erred? Is it flawed? What fruit has it produced? Can you see that there's something wrong? Can you see that it didn't produce what you thought was promised or what was promised out of following that falsehood? Just barely touching the surface here. Consider your life, that your purpose If it's brought by what you put into it, as in you define the purpose of your life, which honestly you can't do, you can do things in your life, but if I said what's your purpose, as in why are you here on this earth, you couldn't tell me based on your own what you put into it. You couldn't tell me why you were put on this earth with your own inventory about your through your own experience. You couldn't tell me through your own inventory. That is just being born in, and acquiring knowledge from, not even from people, not from people, but just from your surroundings. You can't have and attain this knowledge of what's my purpose. You can simply only in that circumstance do things. You can do things. You could do things in your life, but what is the purpose? Where did you, how did it all begin? How did life begin? There's three questions. That the world doesn't have the answer for. God does. How did it all begin? I'm talking unequivocally. How did it all begin? Not a chaotic explosion began divine. We won't use the word divine. Not chaotic explosion started seemingly well-designed creation. Well, we won't use that word either, creation. Okay, that's what's proposed, but again, it's a theory. And then again, to leading to the second question. So that first question, where did you come from? Where did it all begin? Really don't know. Has some ideas, we're told from the world standard. What's your purpose? Be happy. Further the human agenda or the human race. Better ourselves. Be better people. Okay? That's what you do with your, your life. That's, that's not what your purpose. That's what you're doing with your life. It's a difference. It's like taking a sedan, a car, meant to be driven down, you know, public roads and highways, 
and saying, I'm going to make it a, an off-road truck. Well, you're going against its purpose. Its purpose wasn't intended to go off that pavement through mud bogs. You can do that with it, but that wasn't its intention. That's not how the manufacturer made it. And lastly, the final question is, the world can't answer, is what happens after this life? Where are you going? What happens when you die? It's, it's funny, it's the one question, it's the elephant in the room that everybody shies away from. What happens after you die? It's because the world doesn't have the answer for it. Health crazes and exercise and cosmetic products to make you look younger. Look at so-and-so, she's 50 and she looks 25. It's all to escape the reality that, I don't know if you guys knew this um, new study, they, they found that one out of one people die. One out of one people die. Or, you can look at it this way, 10 out of 10 people die. So that's the third question. What happens after you die? The world doesn't know really your origins. Have some ideas. Born out of chaos. Such order born out of chaos, chaotic explosion. I've never seen. Get 10 pounds of tannerite, shoot it with a high powered rifle, and I'll put some put some things in, around it and you show me some order after that explosion. Don't know what, where it all started. Don't know what our purpose is besides what we, the kind of meaning we put into it. That's not purpose, that's what you do. And don't know how it all ends or what's gonna happen. Going back to the initial, you're an influencer. We're all influencers on somebody, even if it's a friend. I, I talked about a lot of um, family type units, but even friends or people, coworkers, they have relations and interactions with. The thing is, is if it does matter, all of this, if it if it matters after this life, then what kind of influencer you are should matter. See, God said it all started in the beginning. Good. There was no death. Everything was good. When sin entered, and man chose to sin, sin entered, or I'm sorry, when man chose to sin, death entered. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. God is so serious about sin, which is just missing the mark, transgression from what he says is good, Trans transgression of the law, knowing to do good and not doing it, that's sin. Death entered, and man is marked with this image of Adam, Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden, because they chose to willfully disobey, death entered, and that mark was put on every man. What's your purpose? Your purpose is to know your Creator. God says your purpose is to know Him. Nobody can know God. That's not true. You have to all knowledge, have all knowledge to even be able to say there's no God. Someone couldn't say there's no gold in my backyard unless they dig up every bit of soil in that backyard. I can know exactly where a little gold bar is in the ground and I can say there's, there's gold in that backyard. I don't have to have all the knowledge. I just have to have the right knowledge. We know it all began good. Sin, 
defiled it. The mark of death is on every man. Mankind. Our purpose wasn't initially, and still is, to know God, to love God, to serve God. Yeah, no, man doesn't want to do that. I know. Because he has that sin nature. He has the stamp of that sin nature on him. So God makes me be bad? It's not what I said. And then where are you going? Well, in the end, it's appointed for man once to die, and after this, the judgment. You're going to stand before your Creator. You give an account for your life. There's not going to be any guiltless. So what are you saying? Everybody's going to go to hell? I didn't say that. If his, if his standard of going to where he is, you want to go where he is, but you don't want him. Well, make that make sense to me. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Like that cheesy song. Nobody wants to go right now. Hmm. Sounds like there's a misconception of what heaven is. People want to go to heaven. They just don't want God there. Well, that's where he lives. That's his home. So what are you going to offer him when he says, you're marked with sin, you're an unclean thing, you cannot come to where I am. Oh God, I'm, I attended church and I was baptized as a baby and I faithfully give. I, I come to service on Christmas and Easter. A whole two times a year, God. And I help at the food shelter now and again. So when you do want to think about religious things, I don't even like that word because that, that word, the connotation today is that it's man thinking he can give God something to placate God, to, to hear God, throw him step up to God, okay, now leave me alone. That's foolishness. He's the one that gives you the breath in your lungs. And you think you're going to tell him how it is you're going to get to where he is one day. He will, you will hear, depart from me. I never knew you. That's what Jesus said. There will be those that say, depart from He will say, depart from me. I never knew you. It's the religious type, the, thing, the ones that think that because they gave God something that earned them a place in heaven. So you're saying that there is origins. We do have a purpose and we can know where we go after we die and it's not just annihilation. There's an afterlife. Everybody's going to live forever. Everybody's going to live forever. Your soul will go on living and it's a matter of are you going to live to eternal glory or eternal condemnation. Let the law convince you. The law of God. Look at, just look at the law. I'm not saying go try and keep the law and be good with God. I said look at the law. Look at yourself before the law. Have you ever taken God's name in vain? Used it loosely, irreverently? Using OMG, the name of Jesus? To, dis, to express disgust rather than a cuss word? Why not use, you know, some tyrant from history? Why would you use the name of Jesus? This man who there was no guile in his mouth. Why use that name to express disgust? You ever told a lie? How many? A lot? Hundreds? Thousands? Can't count them? Not a big deal. God says all liars 
to have their partner like a fire. That's kind of harsh, isn't it? I'm not God. We trivialize sin. We categorize it. Yeah, is murdering someone worse than lying? Yes. But God's standard isn't man's standard either. You ever taken something that wasn't yours? Cheated on your taxes? Downloaded illegal music? I didn't ask you the value. I said, did you ever take something that wasn't yours? What does that make you? It's very easy to see not someone else's sin, but specifically, oh, you're a liar. You're a thief. You're an adulterer. A lot harder for people to see their own condition. See, the law is helpful when we look at it like that. When we let it look at us, the law stops the mouth of justification. It leaves the whole world guilty before God. It brings the knowledge of sin pets. That's a good thing to know your condition, to know where you stand. That's part of all the law as our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, where we are justified by faith. What does that mean? Means the law shows us we're desperate, left wanting sinners before God, hopeless, hopelessly lost. But yet, in due time, according to the scriptures, Christ died for the sins of the world, was buried and raised on the third day, defeating death and the penalty of death forever for those who will receive him, that free gift, putting their trust in what he did for them. He didn't claim to just be a good teacher or man. Yeah, he's the most controversial man in all of history. But this was God manifest in the flesh. This was God saying, I will take the punishment that you so justly deserve upon my son. It wasn't just God, God beat up his son. No, no. God was in the son. Understand that? He was the express image of God. If God could look like a man, he would have looked like Jesus Christ. He was Jesus Christ. He was fully man, but he was fully God. Not part one, part the other, half one, half the other, fully man, fully God. Fully man to stand in our place and fully God that he could and did live the perfect sinless life in our place. A substitute Well, that's, that don't make any sense because nothing's free. Nobody, why would God, if we're so guilty, do that for us? Well, I think you're, you're seeing and understanding grace. That's grace, unmerited favor. You didn't earn it, you didn't deserve it. And yet favor was showed where favor wasn't due. That's love. God commendeth his love towards us. And yet, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But that gift, you can leave it. You don't have to take it. Scriptures tell us to examine ourselves. Whether we be in the faith. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about, do you know where you'd spend eternity? If you die today, do you know, based on your influence on others, where they might spend eternity? Yeah, this all matters. It all matters. The thing is, is when, when one is led to the notion of, you don't know how it began, you don't know what your purpose is. It's whatever you want to do, whatever you do here. And you don't know what happens later on. That's why you see. That is why you see. 
outrageous acts of violence, that's someone that says, it's all meaningless. Yeah, with that belief, it is meaningless. I'm sorry, that's the godless belief. That is what came to that conclusion. That you're just an evolved piece of primordial slime. So you don't have value. That's the thing. Every man, woman, child has value in my eyes because they're made in the image of God. To get to the place of someone thinking that people don't have value, that's the godless viewpoint. That's evolution. And when for some life becomes not good, they lead to a very dark road to the point of committing heinous acts. It's meaningless. That's what they're that's what they're taught. That's what they're told. Indirectly they're told that. That others don't have value. You're just random act of time. Evolved stardust. You don't have intrinsic value like God says you have. So therefore, your value is only what I assign to you. Therefore, if I don't want you to exist, I will make you not exist. That's where these that's where people their thinking will go to. And you want to know how you know there's no fear of God before their eyes? It's because they will not just take others' lives, but then they take their own. What went to them? Thinking that it just goes dark. Man, they didn't consider. What went to them that influenced them, that had the chance of influence on that person that committed those heinous acts? You're an influencer. We're all influencers. What kind of influence you having today? Think about it. And then act on it.